With many mainline Protestant denominations continuing to suffer from declining membership, churches and seminaries are looking for new ways to be vital in the 21st century. Nowhere is that more evident than at McCormick Theological Seminary in Chicago, a seminary of Presbyterian Church USA. We welcome McCormick's new president, Dr. Frank Yamada, to Different Drummers. Thank you for being here today, Dr. Yamada. Um, tell us first how you became interested in a career in the seminary and, and seminary education and how that shaped your life thus far. Mm. Uh, I began my journey first as a Christian, and I, my, my Christian journey is actually a unique one. and is one, I think, that defines my generation. Uh, it really didn't belong to one denomination. I was part of a 40,000-person megachurch, evangelical megachurch to begin with. Mm. Um, and right from the beginning, I felt like I had a call to train future leaders. Mm. Uh, and eventually, that led to a, a call to future study which led me to seminary and eventually to PhD programs and from PhD programs to um, the possibility of teaching at a seminary or in churches. Um, and it just so happened the first job I got was at a seminary, so mm -hmm. seminary teaching. Uh, it is the one place where I find you can have a great um, and significant influence um, on future leaders for the church. Mm -hmm. uh, and my field is Bible, so it's, it's, it's an important field in theological formation. Um, so that's really kind of how I got interested in theological education. I really wanted to have a larger impact on the church um, as part of my calling and as part of what I thought God was going to be doing with my life in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, so flash forward now a number of years to your work at McCormick Seminary. Mm -hmm. and how has that shaped uh, your ongoing mission of Bible study and also uh, how has your mission uh, that you just shared shaped McCormick? I think the Bible has had a huge influence on our contemporary culture. The last part of the 20th century, it's kind of been dominated by fundamentalist evangelical Christians and their interpretation of the Bible. Uh, my particular belief about the Bible is it continues to have a large uh, shaping force on North American culture. Um, and it continues to be something that's hugely important for the way that leaders lead their congregations. Um, in some ways, all churches, like any organization, they need an ethos, and the Bible often produces that kind of ethos. Mm -hmm. Historically, evangelical churches have done that mm -hmm. better than mainline Protestant churches, but I think it certainly has an impact on the way that, um, the way that I tend to lead. Um, I tend to be biblical, but in a very different way that uh, fundamentalist Christians are biblical. Um, I tend to emphasize more things like social justice issues and equality and diversity issues, which are certainly also biblical values, mm -hmm. um, rather than holiness and purity or other such values, which are equally important. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, evangelicals have tended to, to uh, emphasize the latter rather than the former. Mm -hmm. uh, but it certainly has shaped my current ministry. Well, that, the crux to, uh, of what I heard there was that difference of mm -hmm. both your personal understanding of the Bible and also McCormick's mission mm -hmm. in uh, training new leaders in theology that have a different view mm -hmm. of the meaning. How has that coexisted with other um, evangelical ministries and more generally with kind of the public's understanding of what theological education means? Well, historically, theological education, especially as it's uh, uh, taken root in North America, um, has been a graduate school model. And so we are, the McCormick Theological Seminary is uh, an institution of, of higher education and of higher learning. And, and so we have always tried to balance this, this life of the academic world and this life of the church. Um, Academics tend to ask um, very different questions than uh, the person sitting in the pew. Um, they're equally faithful and important questions, um, but the questions can have a profound impact on the way that you understand the Bible, and they can have a profound impact on the way that you understand the life of faith. Um, and McCormick is um, a graduate school, so it, we, we tend to emphasize those values. Um, but our students come from across the theological spectrum. We have students that come from um, fairly liberal, progressive Presbyterian churches, UCC churches, um, and um, from what they call mainline Protestant denominations. And we also have students that come from non-denominational fundamentalist churches. Um, part of what makes things interesting in McCormick is all these folks come with very, very different understandings of the Bible theology of ministry. 
and they come to study together. Um, and that's part of um, what makes it interesting, and it's part of the richness of the, of the diversity that we experience at McCormick. Much of our popular conversation around religion now is polarized, that yep. we have these different groups that you've just mentioned, mm -hmm. and never the twain shall meet. How is that different at McCormick? Uh, well, when I describe McCormick to people, um, I, I, I ask them to imagine sitting in a small group talking about something like baptism or uh, the Lord's Supper or the Eucharist or the Bible or vocation or calling. And in this small group of maybe 10 to 12 students, um, you can have three African-American students, um, two to three Korean students from Korea, um, four very liberal progressive Presbyterian students and a Latino, Latina student and an Asian American student. And they all sit to the, to there together and they study these things together and come with all of their ch questions and challenges, all of their traditions they bring into the classroom. And it just makes for the most rich conversation. And what I found in the years that I've been at McCormick and from those who have, uh, and talking to those who have been there for a while, it just changes everyone. It changes not only the students and the individual students, it changes the teachers and the professors who teach there. Mm -hmm. And how is that having a ripple effect outside of McCormick? Where are your students heading after your training? Uh, well, they tend to head back to the churches from which they came, mm -hmm. which is interesting. And we've heard this back from our alumni and alumna uh, over the years, and that is that they, they come back um, with us with stories of, of subtle disappointment. Mm. that they can't always create the kind of diversity they experienced at McCormick in the different church settings um, that they serve in. Uh, so they often go back to more monoracial contexts, for example, or they often go to more monotheological contexts. Mm -hmm. um, and they miss that. They miss that diversity. Um, and uh, so I hope, and I think from what I hear from our alums, is that they actually come with a, a bigger vision of what the church can be and should be. Mm -hmm. Um, and so those seeds are planted. Um, I think it's just a matter of time before they take root in different congregations and in churches. And we do see that happening mm -hmm. uh, with some church startups. We do see multi-ethnic and multiracial congregations popping up. We do see people trying to work across conservative and liberal lines, whether through not-for-profit organizations or in churches. Mm -hmm. So I, we have great hope mm -hmm. that these seeds that are planted at McCormick mm -hmm take root and bear fruit at a later time. Mm -hmm. Such an important mission. Uh, largely, uh, youth are, have not, in recent years, gone into this line of education and work. It seems like McCormick is doing uh, mountains of, of, of change to direct people in this way. How is that evolving? Mm. Um, well, I think the other thing that our society is facing um, in, at this current time is a huge generational shift. We see it in other sectors. We see it in the business world and, you know, the business world and social media, for example. You know, the fact that uh, someone like Mark Zuckerberg could be one of the most powerful CEOs in the world mm -hmm. says a lot about this change in generational power. Mm -hmm. um, that hasn't happened to a great extent in the churches yet. Mm -hmm. um, we still have a generation of folks who are usually 50 or older who tend to hold most of the power in the churches, who make most of the decisions in our churches. Um, I think that that's going to change because what I've experienced at McCormick, um, we have basically two demographics of students. We have people who are coming back for second careers, 50 or older. Um, and we have uh, a group of folks who are coming straight out of college. I mean, these are our two major demographics uh, of students that come to McCormick and actually that come to most theological education um, institutions. Uh, these folks get this training, and even if there aren't jobs for them when they leave for them, and that, that is one of our challenges, that many of our 20-something, 30-somethings leave uh, with just as rich of a theological education as, a, as, as someone who is a little more uh, experienced in life, and, and yet they're having difficulty finding churches and finding calls. Mm -hmm. um, my sense is that it's just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, our students are very resourceful. They end up in different organizations, not-for-profits. Mm -hmm. Many of them are entering into chaplaincy. They are finding places to do ministry, but it's, at some point, the church 
is going to shift mm -hmm. and we're going to see a, a group of young persons and young adults who are going to take the church into the 21st century mm -hmm. um, in, in ways I think that are going to be very exciting. Well, good news for young people looking to heed that call that they can come to McCormick. I'm Bo River. For Different Drummers and the Greater Chicago Broadcast Ministries, keep the faith.